Hey guys, it's Calvin from the Car Tune Company in New Zealand. Been working on an LS400 and the loom stuffed. 425,000 Ks and this loom is looking really tired. So we're going to get in, we're going to give it a refab. The wire itself is okay. Plastics are broken. Someone was rough doing a starter. Things are looking ugly. Transmission plugs are broken. Broken clips everywhere. Broken, broken, broken. Broken. Broken and siliconed. I've already made a crank loom down the front for it. But this loom's going to get a tidy up. We're going to remove the EGR and find some plastics from another job that's using a 20 series loom on an early model engine. So I'm into it. I'm clearing some tape, getting it ready to put some connectors into it. Let's get into this. I have a box of rubbish, all the old tape, crap off it, and a naked loom. Check out this. So that wiring just falling to bits. Power wires to the coils. Look at that. Temp sensor, all cracking to pieces, all the wiring, idle speed. Oh, look at that. It's amazing that even worked. Coil wiring on the other side. So there's some repairing for me to do there. But first I'd like another set of covers. So I'm going to harvest them off this job over here. Here's my covers that need to come off. Actually, I think my assistant will harvest the covers off this one. And we'll use these. This loom is going to replace a UZS 131 loom. So that job's coming up. I don't recommend mixing and matching looms. But when you have to, you have to. I'm going to continue with mine. My assistant is going to harvest the plastic covers off this nicely and leave it so when I convert it over to a Gen 1 loom that we can put a set of Gen 1 covers on it. I'm starting with the igniter plugs. So I've taken the, the little lock out of the front of the plug. Fingers wrapped around the back. Pop down here. Find the tab. Pop the wire out. And they're pretty brittle down in here. It's quite amazing what a bit of braid and some new plugs do. There's a couple of wires that had got a bit of cracking. So they were replaced. New igniter plug. New airflow meter plug. And, and some useless information. The little plastic locks and the igniter plug is... Different in design to the airflow meter plug. These ones come more up the side. So just some more useless information that I know. I know this because I'm doing a video on swapping airflow meters around on the VVTIs. And I recycled the plug with the broken clip for my testing. And I'd throw in the lockout. And they're not the same as the igniter plug as I now know. Putting some tape on it, taping up the loom. So as we work our way down here, we come to this foamy, yucky crap. And you can see I've solved the problem by removal. Into the rubbish, new sleeving, heat proof to go on, and a new plug. Oxygen sensor wiring is finished. Piece of new conduit on the one with the saggy, foamy crap. Then a heat proof over top, which was a whole lot of fun, and some new plugs. Watch how heat proof this heat proof stuff is. Flame, heat proof.
this is the real loom. This is not a stunt double. And I did just run the torch over it. This stuff is amazing. It'll handle 600 degrees constant. It's in Celsius with the odd burst to a thousand. So I've got confidence. I can put the torch to it like I did and it won't damage it at all. I think now it's time to do that transmission loom. So down here, broken. That one's actually okay. It'll have cracks and will it? Hey, we've got a plug that is actually okay at this stage. That one isn't. The overdrive speed sensor isn't. And, um, oh no, that one's fine. As long as you understand I'm being sarcastic, that one's perfectly fine. Back into it. New ones. Old one, new one, old, old one, new one. Man, that looks like a new one. All right, just a trip of the day, push the locks in. And that one. This is actually really hard with one hand. There was a little bit of destructive testing with destructive removal. And we have braid, new tape, moving on to the injector side of things. Probably don't need that crap. So we've got some new coil plugs to go in. Don't worry about the insides though, that's extra. I'm going to replace the short length of wire here. That piece of wire there that's broken. And do something with this idle speed controller. <laughs> and the water temp. stuck into this loom I've come down the side of the engine here got some sleeving going on I've replaced some wires because they were cracked and ugly I just popped the TPS plug off and I actually got the little cover off uh, the little the retaining clip for the wires in one piece and then I touched it and it just crumbled. And I'm still blown away that guys are doing these looms and they don't want to take them off because the plugs might break. I take them off because the plugs do break and then put new plugs on because I want it to be reliable for the customer. That is the remains of the idle speed control plug. Just, it just shattered in my hands. I should get this done fairly quickly. Crimp some new wires. Oh, I've got to replace this one. Here's the water temp yet to be done. We'll actually put a terminal on it. Put a new plug on it. There's the, there's the piece of rubber underneath that shrink wrap. Make it good again. The other question comes down when you're repairing a, a loom or doing wiring. Should we crimp or should we solder? Both work and it depends on the situation. If this was a brand new loom, 
Chances are there wouldn't be any solder. Sometimes I use a little bit just on the earths because uh, the wires are a bit small and some of my lung, lugs are a little bit big. But most of the time I'm using a crimp. Is there anything wrong with a solder? Not if it's done properly. And in fact, if you don't have a connector, and you don't have a suitable lug, then a solder done correctly is going to work well. I prefer a crimp. And I get these, I have these tiny, tiny crimps, which are an ECU terminal with the terminal cut off. Strong, clean. In most cases, I avoid joints, but there are times that you have to do them. Well, I probably should say I minimize joints. Or sleeving, or tidying, and we're just about done on this side. Put some terminals on. I always have my soldering iron and it's great for sealing the ends of the braid so it doesn't fray and it spends far more time doing that than it does soldering. I think that's probably looking okay. Oh, I need a little bit just around there, a little bit of tape around the TPS. We're all braided up, looking lovely. Now the left hand side. This is my EGR. And this is the fuel pressure solenoid. And I want it gone. Watch this. Can you see it moving? Woo -hoo -hoo. That one there. Right now to perform the same thing with the EGR. Now the EGR, I'm quite certain it's in the end of this plug. I'm quite certain it's these four. Hey, I could look at my diagrams. But where's the fun in that, hey? Those ones. That one. That one, that one, and that one, oh yeah. That one, that one, and that one. How are we looking? I have got this one left, which is where all the main crank stuff goes through. I've got my own little diagram of it. I'm just going to confirm the colors. I can feel a crack. Yes, 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 yes. All right, that's good.
happens when they fall to pieces in this manner is the little lock tabs break off but stay in their place in the terminal and nothing wants to push through where it should go. I don't think that one came out too well. Some of these little rubber pieces have been shattering when I've been trying to remove them. These ones have, have got a little bit of suppleness left. Let's get this braided, get that plug on, tape it up, and I'm going to be done. Ta-da! We have a finished product. Taped up, clipped back together. Clipped back together. Every connector is new. Even the transmission connectors are new. Taped up. It's also getting a brand new front crank loom. That's all done. So it's ready to be fitted to the engine. And you can't even tell I've whipped the EGR wires out. It's been quite a job to bring this loom back up to standard but normally at this point when I'm doing a conversion I move over to the wiring by the ECU and continue. So in some ways this one's quite nice. So I'm pretty happy with the finished product and uh, I'm looking forward to putting it back on the engine and getting it all running. But that's enough for now. Talk to you again soon. Catch you later.